Hello Year 4 and welcome to a test that I'm going to model through for you. You may have done this on your own already. I'm going to show my workings, get to all the answers and hopefully get 50 out of 50. We'll definitely get 50 out of 50 by checking really carefully. So it would be good if you had a piece of paper or a book so you could follow through and record the answers, um, record some of my workings to help you remember for the future. So let's get started. Question one, circle one answer, just one. An Olympic 100 meter race would be measured in. So a 100 meter race is really quite fast. So it's not measured in hours, seconds, it probably is. Minutes, decades, no, it's seconds. You measure a really fast sprint race, like a 100 meter race in seconds, because it doesn't take very long at all. Minutes are quite a lot longer. Hours are long and decades, a decade is 10 years, so that's a long, long time. So that's seconds. Question two, write the next two even numbers after 398. So the next number is 399, then 400, which is even. The next number after 400 is 401, but that's odd, so 402. Question three, circle, circle. The largest amount shown below, the largest amount, £5.67, 580p, well that's £5.80 isn't it, I'm just going to change it to pounds, 505p, that's £5.05, I've got them all in pounds now, £5.40, so 567, 580, 505, 540, 580 is the biggest amount, make sure the circling is very clear. Workings is fine to show your workings. I'm not going to rub them off or anything. Workings are good. So I'm going to move on to question four. I'm going to have to clear what I've written so far and move the page down. Question four. What's this? Missing multiples of 12 in this sequence. We can use our 12 times table song. It's 12 and 24, 36 and 48, then 60. And next you get 72, 84 and 96. Then 108, 120, and 132, and 144. That's definitely okay. 12 times tables in sequence. 12, 24, 36, 48, 16, 72, 84, 96, 108, 120. Question five, write the correct number in the empty box. Here is the answer really, 4,862 at the front because there's the equal sign. And here's the question which has a gap in it. Well, you do these kind of questions in morning maths, don't you? 4,000 is there, so we've got that 4,000. 800 is there, so we've got that. I might just tick them off. 60 is not there. 2 is there. It's the 6T that's missing, isn't it? The 610s. 60 is missing. Question 6, fill in the missing boxes. 73 times 10, that's 730. 835 times 10, Eight, three, five, and we'll need a zero, which I can squeeze in hopefully. Eight thousand three hundred and fifty. Times makes things get bigger. We placed a zero on both of those answers, didn't we? Let's go on to question seven. What's question seven going to be? Total. What does that mean? Total means plus, doesn't it? At the moment, so much of what we're doing, we we practice all the time in morning maths because it's the most common maths, isn't it? The math that comes up the most often that you really need to be good at. 791 is our answer. Make sure you put it in the answer box. Question eight, place the correct signs, greater than or less than or equals in the box. We've got to do it in two. So 5,878, 5,788, this number is bigger than this number. So the crocodile eats the biggest number is what I say. This is bigger than this, okay? In the other box, 5,788 5, or 5,887. Well, this number here is bigger than this number here. So the crocodile eats the biggest number. So just check that the open mouth, if you use the crocodile idea, Check the open mouth is pointing towards the bigger number, not the smaller number, to make sure you get that question correct. And we go on to
to question nine. Tick the box next to the shortest amount of time. Half an hour, that's 30 minutes. Quarter of an hour, that's 15 minutes. 50 minutes, that's 50 minutes. 16 minutes, that's 16 minutes. Shortest amount of time is 15 minutes, isn't it? So some of them weren't written exactly in minutes, so I changed them and then it was all right. Question 10, let's get this to the top. This is just a minus, just a normal morning maths kind of a minus. This morning maths is gonna come up in the tests all the time for your whole life of maths test. Even in secondary school, you need to be good at those morning maths things. So make sure you are by practice. Eight, four, more borrowing. 4,648. Let's write it neatly in the answer box. 4,600. As neat as I can, anyway. And 48. A bit difficult fitting it in neatly. 4,648. Question 11. There are 356 pages in a book. Tim reads 164. How many are left? So he's got a whole book, 356 pages. He's read some of the pages. So we take away the ones he's read to see what's left. It's a takeaway question. Good practice for trying to judge what sign it is when you see a word problem. 192 pages are left. Just check my workings. 192. What are we doing next? Question 12. 16, 12, something, 4. So missing numbers in a sequence. The sequence is getting smaller. It's getting smaller by 4 each time, isn't it? Getting smaller by 4 each time. So I'm going to actually start with my 4s and just count my 4 times table that way if that makes sense, to get the next one. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. So that fills that bit in, going down fours. Zero, what's less than zero? Minus numbers, like minus four. Goes in fours though, minus four, minus eight, minus 12, minus 16, minus 20, that works. Minus four, eight, 12, 16, 20. Don't forget the minus though, because minus eight is not the same as normal eight. So if we go from biggest to smallest, 16, 12, 8, 4, 0, minus 4, minus 8, minus 12, minus 16, minus 20. Right, and we're on question 13 already. Question 13, we have a pictogram. This pictogram shows balloons used at a party. Balloon actually means two balloons on the pictogram. So this yellow one, well, that's worth two, isn't it? Two. I'll write it here. The blue is worth two, four, six, eight, and just half, that will be one, so nine. The red is worth two, four, and half is worth five. The green is worth two, four, six, eight. I haven't even read the rest of the question yet, have I? But I just feel they're going to be, it's going to be useful to know the totals. How many balloons are at the party altogether? Well, it's definitely useful to know the totals now, because if you add them all up, you'll find how many balloons are at the party. So we'll add all this up. I'm going to put 8 with 2 because 8 and 2 go together to make 10. Then I add 9 and I'll get to 19. And then all I've got to do is add the 5 onto 19. 19 plus 5 is 24. So 24 is our answer. How many balloons at a party all together? 24. Question 14. What number is 1,000 more than this? I'll do this in my head and on paper. Because if I just add one to the thousands column, I'll have 5,567. If I do on paper as well, you can see how the column method will tell us it's 5,567. 4,567 goes to 5,567. And on to question 15. I'll have to move this one up. Write the time shown by these clocks in the boxes below. Let's go to here. Go to the shorthand first. The hour's hand has gone past nine, so it's going to be nine something. And the minute's hand, five, ten, fifteen, it's nine fifteen. Put that in the box, also known as quarter past nine, nine fifteen. This one, 
um, the hour, the short hour hand has gone right round, all the way around to here. It's gone past the 11, which means it's 11 something. 11 something. I'll do my five minutes. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 11, 45. You might recognize that as quarter to 12. And we don't need AM or PM because it's not written on any of these clocks. Question 16. Make three pounds 26 using as few coins as possible. Write the coins in the boxes below. One coin has been written for you, the two pound. So we've got to make three pound 26 using as few coins as possible. Now because there's four boxes, I'm guessing that you'll need all four boxes. Can't do it any fewer than that. So let's get another pound. We can't use another, if we want few coins, we want to use the biggest coins we can, but we can't use another two pounds because we'd already be over three pound 26. But two pounds plus one pound is three pounds. So we've done the pounds, we've just got to get 26p on. Well, surely a 20p would be good, wouldn't it? So we've now done the 20p, now we just need 6p. There's no 6p coin, so I guess we'll have to do a five and a one to make the 6p, won't we? If we do it step by step, the next thing kind of makes sense. That makes three pounds, 25 26 three pounds 26 make sure it makes three pounds 26 you could put them in any order it doesn't say what order you have to put them in question 17 let's move this up add together three four five and six okay three four five and six column method is a bit strange for this Let's do another way first. 4 plus 6 we know is 10. So 10 plus 5 is 15 plus 3 is 18. If you do column method, you've still got to do the same things to get yourself to the 18. But anyway, it's 18, isn't it? I should probably put my workings in here. But the answer box is what needs to be correct. And it's 18. Question 18 is next as well. 6 times 7. Um, you know your 7s. Well, you're learning your 6s and 7s in year... Four. I'm going to sing my sevens up to six fingers. Seven, 14, 21, 28, and 35, 42 is what it is. Now we have 60 times seven, which is a lot like six times seven. Six times seven is 42, but we had a zero here, so we placed that in the answer, and it's 420. I call these times tables in disguise, don't I? Maybe you know that. Question 19, fill in the missing boxes. But there's the equals. So we have this side of the equals and this side of the equals. Both sides of the equals have to be the same. 25 plus 75, what's 25 plus 75? That's a little, a little matching pair that you should learn. 25 plus 75 is 100, so try to learn that. That's 100, so if that side is worth 100, then this side over here must be worth 100 as well. Well, we already got 50, so 50 goes with what to make 100? It's 50. Now, I've got these big circles around it all, but that's okay, because my answer box is clear. That would be fine. You're allowed to show workings. And the answer is 50. Just make sure your answer box is really neat. And we can go on to question 20 next. Look at the temperature below. Circle the coldest temperature. What's the coldest? 20 degrees? That's quite warm. It's not that. 4 degrees is colder than 20, isn't it? But now we have the minus numbers. Or minus numbers are the coldest. If it's winter when you're doing this test, which it probably is, you might know that once it goes below zero, like minus one or minus two, it feels really extra cold. What is colder, minus eight or minus 16? Well, the coldest one is minus 16 because it's further below zero. When you go below zero, it gets colder and colder. So this is the coldest, minus 16 degrees Celsius. Question 21, increased. I'm sure you know from morning maths. It means plus, so let's do our plus. This is basic skills, massively important skills. These are, that's why I do morning maths all the time. 6,462 we get, 6,462. Question 22 is rounding to the nearest 10. 482, um, the more, the method for rounding our juice is 482. We're rounding to the nearest 10. 
So I put this little mark around here. Is it 48 tens or will it go up to 49 tens? Well, 2 is a small number, so it can't pull anything up. So it will stay as 48 tens. Round it off with a zero, so we get 480. I'll use the same method for the next one, 365. Let's do it in the box. 365, we're rounded to the nearest 10. So that's this column. So we can put this around this column. Is it going to be 36 tens or going to be pulled up to 37 tens? But if 5 is a strong digit, so it pulls it up to 37 tens. Place a zero to make it round. And our answer for that, let's stick to red, is 370. Make sure it's neat. 370. So we get 480 and 370. Need both of those to get the point for this question. And on we go to question 23. Now this is one you just have to know. Tick the box under the shape that's an octagon. Did you know an octagon has eight sides? Look, if you didn't, you might be able to guess because you know an octopus has eight legs probably. Anyway, an octagon has eight sides, so we need to find the shape with eight sides. That's only got six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think it's this one. Tick it, that's what it says, tick. This one only has one side. Yeah, so I'm happy that it's that shape, the octagon. And we go on to question 24. What are we doing here? Circling something. Circle the correct answer. Is 290 a multiple of 4? Well, we could sing our 4 times table, but it'd be a long while before we got to 290. It's a multiple of, of 4 if it divides exactly by 4. Let's see if it divides exactly by 4. By doing the bus stop. How many falls in 10? 2 remained to 2. It didn't divide exactly. It didn't, so no. If it worked without a remainder, then it would have been a multiple of 4. But it turns out it's not a multiple of 4. There's other ways to do that. That's one of them. Question 25. How many hours are there in two days? To do this, you'll need to know how many hours there are in one day. How many hours in a day? It includes a day and night. We say 24 hours are in a day. So 20, in two days, 24 plus 24, or 24 times 2 if you want, and you get 48. And the answer will be 48 hours. And we're halfway through the test now, aren't we? Halfway. Question 25 is halfway. We hope that all children will be able to get to at least question 25 in the 50 minutes you normally get for this test. Many children can go on. Let's go to question 26. Write this number in figures. That means digits. That means numbers, really. 3,037. 3,037. 3,037. But don't forget the zero placeholder in the hundreds column. 3,037. Did you write 337? If you, if you wrote this, you were tricked by this question. It should be 3,037. Question 27. Complete the frequency table below. Frequency means number. As you can see, number of children. So, oh, there's a missing gap there. Art. Favourite lesson for art was 32 children. English was 18. Maths, we don't know. PE was 30. We know the total was 100. So what I'm going to do is see how many children have voted so far. Let's use the working space. 32, 18 and 30. What does that add up to? 80. But we need it to add up to 100. So what's the missing number? 80 plus what is 100? It's 20. 20 must have picked maths. That makes 50, and that makes 50. Yes, total of 100. So 20 is the missing number. How many months include exactly 30 days? You can do this from the rhyme. 30 days has September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31 except February alone. So it's four months, isn't it? One, two, three, four. Four months have 30 days. Moving on to question 29. What's this going to be? The following Roman numeral in digits. X, X. What's X in Roman numerals? I have a little rhyme. I vote extra large Cadbury's dairy milk. I vote extra large Cadbury's dairy milk. And then I just go one, five, one, five, one, five, one. And make them bigger with zeros so they go big, get bigger all the way through. Anyway, we just, went, we just need to know what x is worth. And as you can see from this, x is worth 10. 2x is worth 20. 
So x, x is 20. And we're on question 30 already. Getting towards the harder question now. Another data handling question. So you did data topic data recently. So it's quite a lot of data questions in this test of everything you've learned this year. On this time graph, what is the distance travelled after 20 minutes? Let's find the time. 20, let's find the minutes, yeah. 20 minutes, that's here, isn't it? That's what we're looking at. The distance travelled after 20 minutes. Let's go up to the line. Oh, it's five. Five kilometres, isn't it? That's data handling, which means reading a graph correctly. Five kilometres. Question 31. How many minutes are there in two hours? You need to know how many minutes in one hour first. 60 minutes in an hour. But two hours will be 60 plus 60, wouldn't it? That's 120, isn't it? I can't write at the moment. 60 plus 60 is 120. 120 minutes. How many seconds in three minutes? Well, how many seconds in one minute is 60 as well? So this one, 60 plus 60 plus 60. Or 60 times three if you want, if you prefer. If you add the three 60s, you get 180. So 120 and 180, you need to get both of those to get the mark on this one. And we're on to question 32, which looks like a telling the time question to me. There it is, question 32. Write the time shown by these clocks in the boxes below. So I always go to the hour hand first. That's how I do this. Go to that short hand, which is the hour hand. The short hand, going round this way, it's gone past six. So it's six something. Now I go to the long hand, the minute hand. Let's do my five times table. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. 625 or 25 minutes past six. Over here, short hand, looks like it's pointed exactly on the 10. So it's probably 10 something. You have to be careful when it looks like it's exact. So hours looks like 10, minutes is five. 10, five. Well, we don't write it as 10, five, do we? It's 10.05. Five minutes past 10 o'clock, so 10.05. And we'll be on question 33, another pictogram, because it's data handling test, isn't it? The ball stands for 10 goals. How many goals were scored altogether? Jack has got 10, 20, 30. Half a ball will be five, won't it? 35. Megan's got 10, 20. Jessica's got 10, 20, 25. Alfie's got 10. So actually I can do a little plus here because all together usually means plus. And we'll see how many goals were scored all together. Is it 100? Wow. It's a famous number and it looks like the answer is, I don't know if that's right, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's not 100, is it? Not 100. There is a carried one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it's 90. 35 and 25 is 60, 70, 80, 90, yep, 90 goals is our answer. I must make a mistake, I'll be very careful with that. On to question 34. Now some people won't get this far in a 50 minute test, that's fine. This is a, these last questions are not for everyone. How much would you have to pay for three orange juices? Let's see how much an orange juice is then. There it is, orange juice, there it is, and it's £1.45. We want three of them. Should we do £1.45 times three, or should we add up three of them? Well, it's whichever you prefer. In this case, I think I'll add up three orange juices. If you buy this in the shop, this is what the person in the shop has to do. They might have technology to help them with the adding, but they basically have to add up what you've spent. You might do this one day if you work in a shop. So we get £4.35. The pound sign's already there, so 4 35 That's how much it is for three orange juices. Notice how I circle the orange juice to make sure I get the right thing. You didn't need the apple juice and a pear juice. They were just to put you off, weren't they? You didn't actually need to use them. And we're on question 35, which looks like it has some minus numbers in. Write the missing number in the box. Minus 50 something and 50. So, a lot of these things go in tens. Let's see if this goes in tens. I need a number that's easiest to understand, so 50. So going backwards, could this be 40, 30, 20, 10, 
zero. Could that be zero? Minus 10, minus 20, minus 30, minus 40, minus 50. Yeah, it does work. That is actually zero. So when you see a scale like this and you don't know what the numbers go up in, I often try 10 first because it's, it's not the most common one, but it's the easiest one. And if 10 doesn't work, I'll try something else. So counting backwards, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 0, minus 10, minus 20, that's what I think it is, minus 30, minus 40, minus 50. That works. So it was minus 20. Not the easiest question ever, that's for sure. And we'll go to question 36. I think there's a bit more to this one, so I'm going to move down. It's talking about the 24-hour clock, isn't it, this question? Do you know the 24-hour clock? In the boxes, write the time shown using the 24-hour clock. So 7 a.m. is written in the 24 hours as 0700 hours. That's how that's written. But there's two parts of this question. We've got to get them both. 5 p.m. If you're putting it in 24 hours, the secret is plus 12. 5 plus 12 is 17. So 1700 is how that's written in the 24-hour clock. Question 37. Malcolm, wonder if you know anyone called Malcolm. Malcolm spends £3.39 in a shop. He pays with a £5 note. How much change does Malcolm get? How much change is a minus? How much change is a minus? Trick here is that this one's in pounds. Well, this one's in pounds as well, but without the point, isn't it? I mean, this one's only got just pounds, while that one's got the pence on the end. So you, when you do this, you've got to do a minus. £5 is bigger than £3.69, isn't it? But to make the um, subtraction work, you've got to do five pounds like this. Fill in the pences with zeros. 5.00 .00 is the same as five, isn't it? Still five point nothing. And you can take away three pounds 69. So you've got to get the order right. And if you do, I can actually see we have number bonds that so this will be one pound 31, I think. But let's check, because I mustn't get it wrong. If you're very good at maths, the best attitude you can have is the attitude that you mustn't get anything wrong. So you're going to check really carefully to find your mistakes, because you will make mistakes. I've never seen a child who doesn't make mistakes, but I've seen children who find all of their mistakes and fix them. So we get £1.31. That's what I thought it would be. Question 38. Another minus numbers question, I think. What temperature is 10 degrees lower than 3 degrees Celsius? 3 degrees. We're going lower. So I'm going to do, well, I'm, yeah, I'll go one degree lower, it'll be two, another one lower, it'll be one, another one lower, it'll be zero, then we'll go to minus numbers. I'm making a number line here, just making a number line so that I can go 10 degrees lower than that. I must have enough now because I'm only going 10 degrees lower, aren't I? Start on three and go down 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. Got to minus 7. In purple now. Minus 7 degrees Celsius. On to question 39. We're coming towards our really hard questions soon. So don't worry if you find these questions tricky. Well done if you're still sticking with this. Following what I'm doing. So question 39. Write a comma multiple of 10 and 12. That's something that's in the 10 times table and in the 12 times table. So the best way to do this is write your 10s, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, well, hopefully that will be enough, write my 12s, 12s we're just learning in year 4, it's 12 and 24, 36 and 48, then 60 and next you get 72, 84 and I'll do more if I need more. Comma multiple of 10 and 12, is there a number that's in both lists? that means it's common it comes up a lot there is actually 60 is in both lists so 60 is correct there's other answers for this 120 180 240 but 60 is right question 40 write each number in the correct place on a venn diagram whenever you see a venn diagram which is usually two ovals or circles overlapping each other a bit whenever you see one always think don't put any number on it twice so you never put a number on it twice. Multiples of 5 are going to go in this circle here. Multiples of 9 are going to go in this circle here. So what goes in the middle? 
Well, it's multiples that are in the fives and the nines. So, might help quite a lot to, um, right, let's see. Okay, let's get 15 first. Let's see if it's in the fives. Five, 10, 15, it was in the fives. Let's see if it's in the nines. Nine, 18, 27, no. It's just in the fives, so 15 goes there. Let's try 27. Let's see if it's in the fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. No, no 27 in the fives. Let's see if it's in the nines. 9, 18, 27. Yes, it was in the nines, so it goes there. Let's try 32. Is it in the fives? It's not, because it's not got a 0 or 5 on the end. Is it in the nines? 9, 18, 27, 36. No. If it's in nothing, it goes outside the circles. Okay? 45. Let's see if it's in the fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Yes, it's in the fives. See if it's in the nines. Five, um, the nines. 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. Yes, it was in both. So it's one of the numbers, those numbers that goes in the middle because it's in the fives and the nines. 54 next. Not in the fives because to be in the fives has to end in five or zero. Is it in the nines though? 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54. Yep, it's in the nines. That would go there. 60, that will be in a fives because it ends in a zero and it's not in the nines. So 60 is just over here. Then we go to 61, that's not in the fives and it's not in the nines either. So 61's another that goes outside. Remember, never write a number more than once, but you have to get everything correct to get these Venn diagrams right normally. That's the answer anyway. Difficult question. Difficult stuff, Venn diagrams. Question 41. Write the time that is 15 minutes later than that shown by the clock. 15 minutes later than that shown by the clock. So the clock, short, the short hand, the hour's hand, has gone past the five. The minute's hand has gone five, 10, 15, 20, 21. That's what the clock says, but we want 15 minutes later. So if I, you can... As long as it doesn't go past 60, you can plus the 15 on. Time's out of 60, so you have to be careful if it was to go past. But it doesn't, it's only 536. And the answer is 536, which is 36 minutes past 5. Or anything that means that. Question 42, how much change is a minus? We saw one of these earlier. Is there from 10 pounds? So what we'll be doing is 10 pounds minus something, won't we? And 10 pounds is going to be 10 pounds and zero zero pence after buying a meal for four pounds 67 and a drink for 92p there's lots of things to do here you've got to work out what you spent which is four pounds 67 plus 92p so i've got to do a little plus first 92p is zero pounds 92 we really are at the questions now um for for people who are more confident at maths a lot of people won't get this far on this test in the 50 minutes. So, 5.59, we're going to take away from 10 pounds, and my number bonds tell me I think the answer will be four pound 41. Let's let column method check that for me. Let's see what we get. So 10 take away nine is one, nine take away five is four, nine take away five is four, four pounds 41 is our answer, four pounds 41. And on to the most difficult questions, 43 down towards the end. Question 43. What time will Marie wake up in the morning if she goes to sleep at 21 o'clock and sleeps for eight hours? Give your answer in the 24-hour clock format. Right, so 21 o'clock. Three hours takes you to 24 o'clock, which is midnight, zero, 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 zero. And then there's five more hours to add on. So it'll be five in the morning. 0, 0,500 hours. Difficult question. I've done it quite quickly because, like I say, it's normally only the most confident mathematicians who get this far anyway. Question 44. Draw a bar that shows there are half as many red flags as blue flags. That's not so bad. Half as many red as blue. You might be able to see that that's half of, half of the blue one, isn't it? If that was the blue one, well, that would be half, wouldn't it? So yeah, half as many red flags as blue. That doesn't seem too hard. 
Another data handling question. That's I need to check that's right. Half as many red flags as blue flags. Yep, that's what the bar shows. That wasn't too bad for question 44. Under 45. What have we got here? Between which hours did the temperature drop fastest? So a fast drop in temperature on a graph is when it's going down as fast. This looks like this. It's going down the fastest. Six, that line must be seven, and that's eight. So it's between seven and eight p.m., isn't it? Seven and eight p.m., that's when it's going down the fastest. So my answer will be between, it's hardest to write the words actually, in the mouse, with the mouse, between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. will be my answer. Between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. That's when the temperature fell the fastest. Question 46, what's the 199th multiple of three? I think it's unlikely you know your three times table up to 199. So you just do 199 times three. Year four, you commonly use grid method or standard method, but 100 and 99, whoops, 190 and 9, 199 times 3. We get 300 in here, 270 here, 27 over here. Add them all up, 300 plus 270 plus, line them up carefully, 27, 7, 9, Five, 597 is the answer. It's almost 200 times three, which would be 600. But one less on each three is 597. Question 47. Find the difference. Difference immediately makes me think minus. Difference is a minus. Between meals sold on Tuesday and Thursday. So go straight to Tuesday and Thursday. Make sure you've focused on those. Meals sold... Oh, well, there's no numbers on the side, so between 0 and 20. Does it go up in 10s? 0, 10, 20, definitely not. Does it go up in 5s? 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. Oh, I thought it would, but it doesn't, does it? 5, 10, 15, 20, no. What does it go up in then? 4s? That's weird. 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. It does, it goes up in 4s. So when you are finding these numbers, you just keep checking when it could go up in. That makes that difficult. But write these numbers on. A very important data handling question. So if they're not there, write them on would be my tip. Find the difference between the meal sold on Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday is in between 12 and 16. 14, that's going to be. This is a hard question, this one. Thursday. Oh, look at that. So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's going to be 9. Yeah, I think most people would not get this one right. The difference between fifth, uh, 14 and 9, a minus, 14 minus 9 is 5. Tough question, that one, I think. Question 48. Timetable questions can be very difficult. Timetable, not times tables. Timetable. Look at the timetable below. Alex got a train in London at 4 minutes before midday. Midday is 12 o'clock. There's London. What's, just, what's 4 minutes before 12 o'clock? This one. Circle what you're focusing on. On the way to Nottingham, going to Leicester, then Nottingham, I suppose, the train was delayed by 20 minutes. At what time did Alex arrive in Nottingham? Well, he would have arrived in Nottingham here, but it's delayed 20 minutes. You've got to add 20 minutes onto that. Now, if you just, if you added 20 minutes onto that, like this, you would get 1362, which is not a real time, is it? Because time's out of 60, you never get more than 60. So it's actually 14.02. 14.02. Difficult question, but like I say, not for everyone, these. These questions at the end are designed to stop people getting 50. Maybe someone can defeat the test and get 50. Write the second largest four-digit odd number. Right, four-digit number. That's got to be the largest four-digit odd number. But we need the second largest four-digit odd number. So it's not going to be 9,998, because that's even. It will be 9,997. Right. 
9,997. And what do we get for the most difficult question of all? Question 50. 4,001. Take away 2,353. Take away 2,535. Wow. It's really not easy. So, I'll do this minus first. Why don't I use the working space? 4,001. Take away 2,353. This is okay because it's a normal minus. Things are not going to be so okay in a minute. But this bit is okay. Normal minus 1,648. That's what we're on after doing the first bit. But then we've got to take away 2,553. Now, so we've got 1,648. We've got to take away 2,500. I think I said that wrong before. 2,535. You can't do it in column method, can you? Because you're supposed to have the biggest number at the top. But we can't put that at the top. We've got to do it in a different way. So if you, if you took off 1,648, you'd get to zero. If you took off that. Um, um, <laughs> am I struggling? Am I struggling a bit? Let's find the difference between this and this. You shouldn't just casually rub out minuses. In this case, that's what we need to do. Let's see what happens. Eight. I'll get this. But not easy. 887. So, if you're on here and you took away 1,648, you'd get to zero. Then we use this number at the top to see how far below zero you would get. You get to minus 887. Now, I've got to be honest, that's the answer. I find it very difficult to explain that kind of a question. Um, I think I will. So that's a minus there, minus 887. So how it works on a number line, really, is you start on 4,001. You would take off um, the first number, 2,353. That gets you to 1,648. Then you would take off 1,648, which gets you to zero. But you weren't supposed to be taking off 1,648. You were supposed to be taking off this, which is more. It's actually 887 more than that. So you then take off another 887, which gets you to minus 887. That question is there as I say, to stop people getting 50 out of 50, to make it very difficult. So if you do, you've done amazingly well if you actually do get 50. Well, I hope I did, because being my job, I should be getting 50 out of 50, as long as I'm careful. That's the end of the video, really. I'm going to put the answers on and go through them, but you may not need them, because you've been working through my answers anyway which are correct, otherwise I'll redo the video, so you know that my answers were correct. Um, I'll keep these on the screen now for the next couple of minutes, but basically it's the end of the video unless you want to look through these answers to your test. So thanks for listening, if you're going now, Sorry, that's question 11. Go down to question 13. And 15.
I'm still here if you're wondering. Nearly at the end now. There's a bit more question 36. Last few questions, 597, 5, 1402, 9,997, and the hardest of all, minus 887, which would be very hard for anyone to get. So thanks for listening if you are still here. Now I'll see you again on something else.